Good morning and welcome to the Mayor's Weekly News Conference. Today we will publicize fire and police recruitment, announce an upcoming fire police open house, introduce the new fire and police curriculum at Erie High School, explain the new effort at City Hall to improve our service culture. Now I'll turn it over to the Mayor. Thank you, Renee. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Uh, first, we're very excited to announce that the window for taking the fire and the police applications is just about to open. Remember, our goal is that police and fire reflect the community with an appropriate number of African American, Hispanic American, and New American officers. Last night, we had the New American People's Supper, the affinity dinner with the New Americans. Coming new to this country, where a different language is spoken, I can only kind of imagine how hard that would be. All of our ancestors, though, went through the same thing. One of the major comments that came out of last night's dinner is that Erie's New Americans would feel much more comfortable dealing with the police if they could see police officers that looked like and sounded like they do. You may remember that last year, in an effort to increase our opportunity to recruit a more diverse candidates for the police pool, we moved police testing to the Northwest Pennsylvania Regional Police Testing Consortium at Mercyhurst Northeast. This change enables us now to recruit police officers every year instead of every two years. In addition, last year our community liaison, Michael Outlaw, coordinated coaching sessions for the written and agility portions of the police exam. I can tell you some of those physical coaching sessions were very early in the morning, right Michael? <laughs> Throughout the past year, we have continued to work on efforts to reach minorities to get the word out about fulfilling careers in the police department and the fire department. This year, we have additional opportunities to announce. I deeply respect the work that our firefighters and police officers do. Every day, they put their lives on the line to protect all of us. It is truly a calling that only a select group of people, I believe, can perform. If you feel that calling, we want to make sure you understand three things about the current process. First, that you understand the qualifications to serve. Second, that you know the application process, what you need to go through. And third, that you're prepared to do well in the test. Next, I'll go over some general items that pertain to both careers, police and fire. So to apply to be a police officer or a firefighter, residents must first have a high school diploma or a GED. Next they have to pass a background check. Third, they have to move their residence to within 15 miles of City Hall within one year of being hired. And fourth, they have to meet all the qualifications set by the City of Erie's Civil Service Board. Fire and police benefits are very good and they include a vested pension after 12 years of service, access to ret a retirement savings plan including a 457B plan and a 401A plan, they, it includes life, medical, dental, prescription, and vision insurance available at very minimal costs, and paid holidays, sick days, and you also get your birthday off with pay every year. Next, I'd like to introduce Chief Guy Santone to come up and give us some more details related to the Erie Fire Department. Chief Santone. Good morning. Um, like the, mayor, the mayor said, um, there's a few things you have to do before you get on the fire department. Um, it's not that difficult. Uh, I want to talk about the pay. Um, this is a job that is uh, very well paid, $76,000 when, when you have your 36 months on, and you start at almost $46,000. Um, even better than that is the money and, and the benefits is the fact that it's a very rewarding job. I mean, if you like helping people, um, this is the position that you want. Uh, I Googled this morning the average turnover rate in a normal job is 10%. And I've been on 32 years, and I've, we have never had anybody leave the fire department. Uh, this is a, a position where once you have it, you'll always have it until the time, time you retire. So I encourage everybody, all, all the uh, <coughs> minority community, look at this very closely uh, this is an opportunity for everybody to have a good standing lifestyle uh, right now i'd like to turn it over to cena cena is one of our firefighters and she can explain a little bit about how she likes the job 
Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Sina Michelle. I've been with the Erie Fire Department for nine years. Um, it's very rewarding, um, and it's uh, an honor to be a part of the recruiting process. Um, we are definitely hoping to diversify the department and um, hopefully uh, just spark some interest. We'll even take curiosity. We can work with that and turn it into something um, that has the, the department uh, be a reflection of uh, the community that we serve. Thank you. Thank you, Chief, and Cena and uh, Chief mentioned to me earlier there was a fire last night, and so it is a dangerous job. Uh, one of the firefighters was injured when he fell through a floor and dislocated his shoulder, right? So, tor 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 okay. So uh, it, it's, it's, it's not an easy job, but if you're called to do it, we, we welcome you. Uh, next, I'd like to invite up to the podium uh, Deputy Chief Mike Nolan, and Mike's going to give us some more details on, on the police. Mike. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'd like to echo the sentiments of Chief Santone regarding the, the desire uh, and also the mayor to diversify our ranks in the police department. Um, I believe that there is, it has some merit, that the, the community that we serve uh, needs to have confidence and faith in their police department in order for us to be effective. And if that can be accomplished by greater diversity, I'm, we're all for it. Um, if I can give you some specific information about the job of an Erie police officer. To be hired by the Erie police, you must be at least 21 years of age and have your Act 120 certification. There's a bit of confusion that I hope we can clear up at this point that you don't need Act 120 certification or to be 20 years of age to actually take the course or to even take the test. They're, they're separate entities. The hiring process, though, for the city of Erie requires that you be 21 years of age and you have completed Act 120 certification. Um, the salary of an Erie police officer after 36 months is $78,863. You start at a little over $47,000. So, again, another well, good-paying job for this area, and uh, it's, it's, it's a good way to earn a living. There's... It's a very rewarding job. It's a difficult job. We handle between 50 and 60,000 calls a year. That we're a 24-7 operation, and uh, each shift is almost equally as busy as the one before and after it, so uh, there's not much of a downtime for us. So 24-7 operation. As a new hire, as a patrol officer, who all new hires eventually become after their uh, training period, you work a four-on, two-off schedule. You work eight and a half hour shifts. You begin, You are assigned to th one of three patrol groups who rotate through the uh, three shifts. And uh, you remain there and you learn the police work, you learn at the street level. Application for the consortium testing runs from April 15th to June 28th. There's a $75 fee. Uh, information about that can be found on the city's website. And the test for this year the police test will be held at McDowell High on August 3rd. And again, I, I must stress, you must have your Act 120 certification prior to being hired by the police department. You can take the, you can take the test, but if you score high on that test and you have not obtained your Act 120 certification, you may be turned down for an offer of a job because you don't have it. So it's important to seek out that training and get that certification. So that's all I have. And Renee, just let me know the next Act 120 cer certification is July 8th of this year, if, if, you wanna, if you need to get that. So thank you, Deputy Chief Nolan. really appreciate it. Uh, both of these careers present fulfilling opportunities to make a significant contribution to our community and obviously also earn a very good living. By law, we hire people for police and fire based on test scores. But there is an advantage to anyone who serves successfully in any branch of the U.S. military. Honorably discharged U.S. veterans receive 10 points added to their test scores, which mo obviously moves them up in the ranking. These additional 10 points are required by, by state law throughout the state. Military veterans have received training and developed 
habits that really help them as police officers or firefighters in doing their job. So that's why they get these extra 10 points. My goal is by December of 2021, the city staff reflects the makeup of our community. This includes our police and fire departments, of course, as well. In order to help with any minority recruitment, we encourage minority veterans to apply for police or fire. Here with us today are some people that have helped us with this as well. From the Naval Operations Support Center, we have the Erie Commanding Officer, Evita Salas, the Senior Enlisted Leader, Chief Henry Ho, Senior Staff Petty Officers are Villas, Thompson, Fernandez, and Gatling are here with us as well. I'd invite them to come up and join me at the podium, and I'd ask Lieutenant Commander Evita Salas to say a few words about what and how they've helped us in recruiting minority veterans. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Lieutenant Commander Vita Salas, and I'm the commanding officer of Navy Operational Support Center here in Erie. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for having us here. Uh, we're thrilled to be here to speak on veteran recruiting and supporting the effort of the city to hire Navy veterans for the police and fire uh, department. Um, we have, at our reserve center, Navy and Marine Corps personnel. There's a total of about 150 of us altogether, active and reserve. Uh, many are eager and have expressed interest in applying for uh, these coveted positions with the police and fire department. And we have spread the word within our reserve center um, and among our other brethren here in the area. We have Coast Guard, we have Army Reserve, we have some Air Force uh, that are local as well uh, to help with the recruiting efforts. We see the importance and value of wearing the uniform, obviously. So we answered the call and as the mayor said, it's a unique calling that we answer and it's the same for the fire and police. So it naturally translates uh, military service into fire and police force. We have trained uh, police force, this uh, MA1 uh, Fernandez is trained. He represents the, um, the Navy police force, which is called Master at Arms. Every Navy personnel, in case you don't know, is trained in firefighting. It's a requirement because the number one threat to ships is fires. So we have to know it's very important. It's an all hands effort that we put out fires on the ship and save the ship and personnel on board. So with a Navy veteran, you'll have a trained, um, mature individual, physically fit, who's trained already in a lot of these uh, skill sets that you require. So um, with that, yeah, I'm, I'll be happy to take any questions or about that. It's easy to apply for you. Okay, <laughs> all right. But we're happy to be here and uh, we're local. We're right behind the um, VA hospital and uh, we'll continue um, spreading the word. Thank you for having us. Mm -hmm. In case you're wondering, like I was, Officer Villas is six feet seven inches tall. <laughs> <laughs> Next, I'd, I'd like to introduce Chantel Hilliard, the Executive Director of Booker T. Washington Center. He's going to come up and tell us about the upcoming Fire Police Open House that he is hosting at the center, at his center, on April 10th. Chantel. Thank you, Mayor. Good morning, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to be here today to work with the mayor and his administration, Chief Santone, uh, Deputy Chief Nolan. Uh, we've, we've been meeting uh, along with uh, Mr. Michael Outlaw uh, in the efforts of diversifying police and fire, uh, and also uh, as well as the Erie School District as well. So we're excited uh, at the Booker T. Washington Center uh, to help in those endeavors. Um, Booker T. Washington Center has been around since 1923, so we've been in this community for a long time, serving individuals uh, uh, who are qualified for these positions. So uh, April 10th at 6.30 uh, at the Booker T. Washington Center, we will, we will be hosting uh, a police and fire open house. All of the pertinent information will be there. All of the pertinent people that uh, people need to ask questions to will be there. Uh, the importance of uh, diversifying police and fire in our community is paramount. Uh, and so that's why we're on board uh, and we appreciate the opportunity to do some uh, help with recruiting uh, for both of these particular jobs. These are great paying jobs. These are uh, rewarding jobs to our community uh, and we're excited to be a part of it. Uh, and so we want to make sure everybody gets the word out 
uh, 6.30, uh, April 10th, at the Booker T. Washington Center. Uh, we'll have, uh, uh, you know, uh, Deputy Chiefs mentioned about the Act 120. We'll have Mercyhurst Police Academy there as well. Uh, I'm sure police and fire will be there. Uh, we will talk about the application process. We'll talk about uh, the, the, the school and the educational piece uh, that we're working on. Uh, so it'll be a, a, a great opportunity for those individuals that are interested. So please spread the word. Uh, and uh, hopefully we can get enough people out uh, to try to, uh, you know, uh, become part of the police and fire team. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Chantel. I appreciate you helping spread the word. I also appreciate the wor work that you, Gary Horton, and James Sherrod are doing over on Savacchio Park. That's very exciting stuff coming there. Uh, we're still not done with police uh, and fire yet. Our next item is uh, we're, we're going to have the uh, uh, we're going to talk about what's going on in the Erie School District to help prepare high school students for police and fire. Uh, very happy to have with us today. Uh, well, first we're going to have, uh, along the same line, first we're going to have to come up, Michael Outlaw, he's going to come up and explain a little bit about what's going on with this program. Michael. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. The man who needs no introduction. All right. <laughs> but um, since early last year, the city has been working to identify ways to increase diversity for the fire and police department. Um, some of these efforts that we um, put forth last year, it yielded an increase in people of color taking the test, but it did not yield the results that we know are attainable. So we went, we went back to the drawing board to develop a stronger, more strategic, collaborative approach with Mercer University, Booker T. Washington Center, the Erie School District, the U.S. Navy, in the private sector as well to assist us in these endeavors to increase diversity. So one of the first strategies that we did was to create a firefighter and police officers curriculum, integrating that curriculum to the Erie School District Protective Service Program. We think that is very imperative. It is very important to provide that skill set to the students um, within that footprint who has aspirations of, of becoming a police officer or a firefighter. So again, our efforts are being strategic and deliberate. Um, so, that's, so that's phase two. I'm sorry, phase one. Phase two was to make the curriculum available for the community members who has an interest in working for those departments, those departments as well. Um, we began that these efforts will start the city on a pathway to diversifying the police and fire department. The following individuals have been instrumental in this diversity process. Fire Chief Guy Santone, Firefighter Cena Michelle. I just want to pause for a second and just say something about Firefighter Cena Michelle. She represents um, an African American woman who's a, who's a firefighter. And it's imperative that her image, her face, is put out there on mainstream to plant the seeds of hope and other people of color within the city of Erie, Pennsylvania. So oftentimes the media does not do a, a great service of showing a positive face of people of color. So we are going to really begin to push individuals like Cena Michelle, Tom Lennox, William ba uh, Detective Will William Bailey to the forefront to show that there are people of color um, in these positions and these are good family sustaining jobs. So again, it's all about addressing the image that's being portrayed out in the community. Um, like Deputy Chief Mike Nolan said earlier, it's about trust. Oftentimes, that disconnect is when we don't see people that's reflective of the community in positions of power. So again, it's all about restoring that trust and hope within the community in the city of Erie, Pennsylvania. So moving forward, other individuals who were essential in this process was Civil Service Board members Tony Paul, um, Fred Rush, Chief Dan Sprezzarni, Deputy Chief Mike Nolan, Sergeant Tom Lennox, Detective William Bailey, William Bailey, Mr. Chantel Heard, who is the Executive Director of Booker T. Washington Center, Dr. Bill Belf Belafour from Mercer University, Dr. Highland, uh, Veteran Service Coordinator, Mr. Zumgala, and uh, Bill Hell from Mercer University Police Academy, Mr. Pat Herr. You know, Pat Herr is the man that, you know, flaunts his blazers every time I see him. All right, uh, Mr. Court Gold um, from the Erie Community Foundation, Mr. Brian Polito. Brian Polito has answered the call at every 
every step in this process. Um, he doesn't hesitate. Um, he says, Mike, whatever you need, let me know. And again, he's been very, very instrumental in this process. So Brian, thank you for that. And Ms. B. Haberski as well, even though she sets her meetings at eight o'clock in the morning. Uh, <laughs> but nonetheless, she's been instrumental in this process. <laughs> um, Ms. Pam Mikowski as well. You know, there's some contentions at time, but we nonetheless, we are working for the same common goal. Um, Mr. Tom Dolak, who's retired. Chief Henry Hall and his staff, thank you very much, sir, for responding as well. Um, everyone who I just named believes that collaboration is essential to addressing the complex issue of diversity. We also think it is vital to give our students and our community members the best option to be successful. So as you can tell, we've been working diligently, diligently to identify strategies to increase diversity for the fire department and police department. And today you are seeing some of the fruits of those efforts. I implore everyone to stay tuned for phase three of Pathways to Diversity, which involves the private sector in a safer, in a safer downtown for everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. I really appreciate all your leadership, your hard work uh, making this happen, helping us to diversify our, our staff here at City Hall. Uh, here to explain a little bit more about the curriculum at the Erie Public Schools are Superintendent Brian Polito, Assistant Superintendent B. Haberski, and Pam Mikowski. And I believe that uh, Brian and Pam are going to come up and talk about this a little bit. Well, good morning, everyone. We're very excited to be a part of this program. Uh, not only do we think that it's going to help the city with its uh, diversity initiative, but it aligns with our strategic plan. Uh, really by providing very unique and engaging programming for our students as well as really aligning what we're doing in the classroom with the needs of the workforce. And to talk more about the programs, we have our Director of Career and Tech, Pam Mikowski, here today. Thank you, Mr. Polito. Um, <clears throat> at Erie's Public Schools, we're very proud and honored to work with the, uh, the city, the fire department and the police department to provide the instruction that our students need to be successful with the, uh, the police and fire exams. Um, we really hope to help burst, boost the diversity uh, in these two uh, Erie, um, the city fire department and the police department, and, um, and we're really trying our, our best to prepare the students to, to do well in both of those exams. So thank you very much for that opportunity. We're getting ready now to move on to a different topic. Before we leave, I just want to. Uh, put out a word that to members of my team that members of my team members of the uh, erie police department members of the erie fire department and myself will will be visiting centers of worship over the next couple of months to try to help spread the word about these opportunities so if you're if anyone is listening and your house of worship would be interested in having us come please reach out to michael outlaw michael's number is 870-1236 so 870-1236 to reach michael next as you all know, I think one of our team's major goals is to provide world-class service to the people of Erie and, in fact, to anyone who walks into City Hall. Since taking, taking office, we've actually taken four steps in that direction already. The first was updating the city's website and creating a very strong social media presence, which the city never had before. Next, we asked employees, kind of a simple thing, but begin wearing their name badges when they're in City Hall so that if somebody is here from outside City Hall, they can see who the employees are and ask for help. The third thing we did was the 2010 rule, which is when you're 20 feet away from somebody, make eye contact and smile. When you're 10 feet away, say something. Hi, how are you? Good to see you, whatever. And that's such a simple thing, but it seems, at least to me, to have made a real positive difference here. The fourth thing, which was a major effort, was the creation of the Citizens Response Center. They handle now over 200 calls per month, and they usually get back to 90% of the customers within a day or two with an answer to their question. I'm pleased to announce today a fifth step that we're taking towards world-class service. We now have volunteer greeters in the State Street lobby to welcome visitors and provide them with any help or direction they need. I want to give a big thanks to Moss Sela, who's the coordinator of our Citizens Response Center. He's the one whose efforts put together this volunteer program. Moss took the initiative to recruit volunteers to work two-hour shifts. I th really thank Moss for putting this program together. I've been trying to greet every volunteer as they arrive. Uh, we are very grateful for all of their willingness to serve. 
By the way, the volunteers are seated in a very special piece of U.S. history down in the State Street lobby. They're actually sitting in Mayor Lou Tulio's former desk to greet uh, people that come in there. So we're still recruiting new volunteers also. So anyone interested in serving should contact Moss Sela at the Citizens Response Center, which is 870-1111. Lastly today, I want to briefly correct what's been a misunderstanding that occurred in some of yesterday's news reports. The city is not proactively seeking to privatize the garbage pickup. Here's what we are actually doing. Under the early intervention plan, we are beginning this in the very beginning stages of working with a consultant to evaluate all city operations. They will evaluate the city operations to see what we can do more efficiently. Our first meeting with the consultant is actually next week. At this point, we have no idea what they're going to recommend. We expect the, cons the consultant study to last actually about six months, and we will very seriously cons consider any recommendations they make to reduce expenses or increase income. That wraps up today's press conference. Thank you all very much for being here. Appreciate it. And everyone should remain uh, that spoke should remain available in case the press wants to interview you before you leave. Thanks very much.